Today we're going to be talking about a French man, a Frenchman called Jean Respal. What is so important about Jean Respal? Well, he could be called a modern day prophet. He was born in 1925. Today he lives in France and he's almost 90 years old. But Jean Respal is most famous for the book he wrote. Back in 1972, he wrote this book, and it was published in 1973, The Camp of Saints. And this book is making a big, big comeback in a big, big way, of course, because he is, all of a sudden he's starting to look like a modern-day prophet. And that's who we're going to be talking about today, Jean Respal. How did he come to imagine this story back in 1972? And we're going to go into what the story's about, but it's a chilling story that he wrote. But to be able to understand how his imagination was able to come up with this story back in 1972 when Europe did not have any immigration problem at all. Europe... Modern-day Europe has never really had an immigration problem. They've always, uh, all their people who were down and out and poor normally immigrated to America, and they assimilated into a new American empire. And it all worked out good. But somehow, back in 1972, he came up with this, um, he imagined something that nobody could even imagine back in 1972. In the book, he writes about Boats, a million, a million Indians on a boat from India, and they just show up at the shores of France. And, that, and after that boat, there's a million more after that boat. And it all happens in a really quick amount of time. And in this story, the Frenchmen, the French people have to say, what do we got, what, what, what can we do? Because he, he's talking huge numbers in the books. Millions of poor people from India show up and... The French people don't know what to do because he, 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 in his book, he, he brings up the Christian values, the Christian morals. I mean, we cannot turn these people away. We cannot shoot them. We can, we, so they don't know what to do. The Christians, it's, it, that's the most important part of his book. They don't know what to do. And sooner, and, and, and before you know it, the whole country of France is over overrun by people from India and it's just it's just a nightmare and that's the book and he saw this back in 1972 and my one of the points I want to bring up is how did he imagine this and I'm going to give you a little hint he also was a world traveler he would travel around the world before he wrote this book and one of the things he was interested in it was disappearing cultures so he would go to areas where the cultures were disappearing, you know, say like native native Indian cultures, and they were disappearing, and he would go there, he would travel, he would see, and he, in his mind he would say, hey, these people have to fight to survive, but they never did. The disappearing cultures, the reason why cultures disappear is because they give up the fight, they don't care. Pretty much like, you know, sitting on the couch watching the Kardashians, your, your fight is gone, you're out, you're done. Put that damn potato chip in your mouth and drink a Coca-Cola because your fighting days are over. Seriously, that's what he saw. When he, when he went to these disappearing cultures throughout the world and he saw the people, they gave up the fight. And when you give up the fight, the culture disappears. He saw that. So in that imagination of his, that fantastic imagination of his, he wrote this book. And the camp, the book is called The Camp of of the saints. As I say, it's making a big, big comeback. I recommend that you read it. The problem is, for us American folk, is uh, finding the book in a English text, which may not be easy. But I wonder, and then the people in France, they interview Jean Respal today. They interview him. What does he think about these images he sees today? And it must be, think about his mind. He sees these pictures right now of all these people coming to Europe. And this must have been the exact picture he had in his mind in 1972. Isn't that amazing, people with imagination? That's why the people with imagination are so important in our 
communities, our culture. That's why people like Obama, who have no imagination, people like Pelosi and Harry Reid, they have absolutely not an inch of imagination in their body. That's why they should be pushed to the side and have no leadership at a role at all. That's a really good point that I want to bring up. The problem with the leaders of the Western world today, not only in America, but also over in Europe, is the leaders that are pushed up there by the global elite money changers. They have not an, not an ounce of imagination in their body. I mean, all they know how to do is listen to lobbyists, take orders from lawyers, listen to the bankers and the money changers. These people are just strictly sheep. Our leaders like Obama and Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid and all the rest of the bums out there, Hillary Clinton, they don't have an ounce of imagination in their whole goddamn body. And that's what I'm trying to say. That's the problem. Too bad we don't have men like this in leadership roles. The problem is a guy like this is too smart to want to be thrown out there in the public eye. He's probably too clever for that. But that's what we need more. We need to force the people with imagination. We need to force guys like this. We need to force them into public service and say, hey, we got to you know, put pressure on them. Say, hey, we cannot have people like Hillary Clinton and Obama destroying the world. We need you there for at least a year or two to have the imagination to lead the country. Now, obviously, he's 90 years old. He'll, he won't be leading anybody. He's 90 years old. But uh, we have to bring up this book. This is a great, great book he wrote, 1972, published in 1973. Now, the weird part about it, that in a recent interview, he said he would not even be able to write this book today. Seriously. That's what. That's how sad civilization is. That's how bad the West is right now. Because of the laws in America and the laws in France, he would not even be allowed to write this book. And what are you talking about? He's talking about laws like, uh, I think, the Gassot, the Gassot Law, the Lelouch, the Perben. These are French laws that prevent you from even writing a book like this. You cannot say anything bad about anybody anymore. You have to just sit on your couch and watch the Kardashians and do exactly as you're told. And that's the scary part of the world we live in today. That because we live in such a police state, that we've got a man here with such a great imagination, and he even admits to the world today that he would not be able to write this book today because of the laws that are passed by people like Hillary Clinton, Obama, George Bush, these are people who are controlled by the global elite money changers. Remember, they don't even write the laws. They just, they're handed the law. The lobbyists hand them the laws and say, Hillary, pass this law. The lobbyists hand the law to George Bush. George Bush, hand this law. They order them. You got people like George Bush, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Obama. They don't write the laws. They are ordered to pass the laws that the lobbyists write, and they and now we are a slave. And if you sit on the couch and watch the Kardashians and keep your mouth shut, well, you'll be okay. But if you open your mouth like me, well, you end up in a FEMA camp. <laughs>